Welcome to the video. So today we'll be installing Home Assistant into a virtual machine running on a Windows host. We'll be using the excellent free application called VirtualBox by Oracle. Yes, that Oracle, the ones you see in the movies and is the king of databases in the corporate world. To create a virtual machine, in this case Linux, and then installing Home Assistant into this virtual machine. Sounds complex? Well, it's not and this guide will step you through the process. We'll be covering a lot of information in this step-by-step -step guide, so please check the description if you need to jump to specific topics. Also, if you have any questions regarding the installation or have any suggestions for future topics, then please feel free to drop those into the comments and we'll try and get those included into the video production schedule. So let's get our hands dirty. So for the purposes of this installation, we'll be using a Dell 9020M microcomputer with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of SSD storage. As I mentioned in previous videos about the Home Assistant Green, this hardware is a lot quicker than a Home Assistant coloured hardware or a Raspberry Pi, including the new released Pi 5. It also gives you an opportunity for expansion and upgrade with the added advantage of allowing you to perform other functions on the machine, effectively using this as a home lab. But if you're looking for a suitable piece of hardware to run this on, then I'd suggest it should be a Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine, preferably a 64-bit version of it. It should have four gigabytes of RAM, recommended to be eight gigabytes of RAM, It'll need at least 32 gigabytes of free disk storage, recommended above 40. It must have virtualization turned on. We'll go through the specifics of how to do that when we do the installation. You'll need to have the Oracle VirtualBox installation file and the Home Assistant.vdi installation file as well. So I'm now logged into the Windows machine that I'm going to install VirtualBox onto. First, let's go and get VirtualBox. To do this, open up Edge, search for VirtualBox Download. If you scroll down on the download box itself, you'll see the latest version. In this case, it's VirtualBox 7.0.10. We're gonna to go to the Windows host version, and we're gonna save this. We also want to bring down the VirtualBox extension pack. So let's quickly just check to see if virtualization is active on this machine or not. Right click in the taskbar, select Task Manager, go to Performance, and you'll see on Performance on CPU, there's a virtualization is enabled. If this is disabled on your machine, you're going to have to go into the BIOS and update it to turn it on. I won't cover that in this video, as there are many permutations of BIOS. I'd recommend that you Google the individual machine that you have and the activation of the virtualization in the BIOS for that motherboard. Open up File Explorer, go to our Downloads directory, double click on the VirtualBox 7.0.10. Accept the user access control. Now VirtualBox has responded with an error message saying that it needs the Microsoft Visual C++ 2019 redistribution package. Now this is a brand new install of Windows 10, so therefore it hasn't got anything loaded onto it. We press OK at this point in time. It'll ask us to finish and it gives us an error. We'll need to go and get that copy of that redistribution now. So since this is a brand new installation of Windows 10, I did a search for Windows 2019 C++ distribution. Press this to download, download to the appropriate section. We'll be picking up on this version here for x64. And we'll save to our downloads directory and we'll open. Agree to the terms and conditions, install, accept the user account, successful into our VirtualBox installation, double click it, accept the user access controls, and now we've gone past the section asking for the C++ library. So now we can press the next. We can leave the defaults alone and the location can remain the same as well. Press next, 
There's a warning about the network interface card installing VirtualBox networking. We'll press yes and we'll install. Now wait for it to finish. Now the installation is completed. We can press start Oracle VM VirtualBox. Now that we've started VirtualBox, let's add in the expansion pack. Uh, this has changed since an earlier version. So now we need to go to file tools, extension pack manager, click on the install button. Inside of our downloads, we have the extension pack that matches on the version number that we just installed. Press OK, install. Scroll down to the end of the license agreement. Press OK. It should now be installed. We can now exit out of tools. If I go back to the welcome. Now from here, we should be able to create a new machine. We're going to go into the virtual machine. We're going to give it a name, Home Assistant. We'll leave the folder alone at this. On type, we're going to select Linux and on version, other Linux 64 bit. And we're going to press next. Base memory, two gigabytes, which is 2048. Processors, we're going to move to two processors and we're going to enable EFI. Now let's go and get our Home Assistant installation file. If we search for Home Assistant installation, navigate to the first one. Scroll down until you get into the Windows section. Press the chevron to the right. The first one should say virtualbox.vdi. We can download this. Click on the link, save as, send it off to our downloads directory. This will take a bit of time as it is 389 megabits in size. Now that the VirtualBox VDI file is downloaded, we should be able to see it inside a power downloads directory we need to go to the downloads right click extract all you can keep the existing folder name the same and press extract now let's press next let's use an existing virtual hard disk file press the little folder to the right of the empty press add navigate to your downloads navigate to the vdi file and press open. Now you can choose this one and press next. Verify the summary is as you wanted. Press finish. We now need to set, change some settings on it. Go into the settings, go into the system. Verify that the base memory is two gigabytes. Verify that we have enable EFI turned on. We should have two processors set up. If we go to networks, verify that the enable network adapter is ticked. Under attach to, switch this to bridged. You can now select either your wireless or your wired connection. In my case, this is connected via wireless and I don't have a problem with my wireless. And this is a very strong signal. You can now press OK. You can now start your Home Assistant. Home Assistant will go through and start the application. This can take up to five to 10 minutes, depending on the hardware that you're working on. Once Home Assistant has finished setting up, it'll come back with this Home Assistant banner page. As you can see from the screen, there are two different methods to access into it. There's a local version with homeassistant.local, colon 8123. Alternatively, there's a local IP address. I like to use the IP address method. If you open up a browser, you are greeted with a welcoming. There are two different decisions you need to make here. You can create a new instance of Home Assistance, or alternatively, you can restore from a backup. Previously, we created a video on how to backup Home Assistant using a 321 strategy. At this point, we can find our restore file, which is a .tar file. And if you watch the video above, it will show you the location of that file. It's at this point that we can use our backup that we created previously, and we can restore back to this instance of Home Assistant creating a perfect replica of what we backed up. Alternatively, we can create a brand new instance here. So let's run through that instance so that you can see how that works. Press the create user. Give it a name, Smart Home Australia in this case. Give it a username, SHA. Give it a password. Press create account. In my case, I'm just gonna type Sydney. Press next. I like to give these analytics. They are anonymous and they do help the Nebuchadnezzar and Home Assistant guys create better automations and better uh, software. So uh, your preference, but I like to tick these ones. 
what Home Assistant has done is it scanned through my network and found some devices that are already connected to the network that it would like to integrate with them. I'll just press finish at this point in time and not integrate any of these. And there we go. There is Home Assistant in its raw format. Now, if you'd like to see what you can do from this point, I suggest that you go and watch some of the other videos that we have under the Smart Home Australia banner. That channel takes you through all of the various different integrations, options, etc., associated with Home Assistant. Just one word of caution in relation to this one. If you have done a restore of your production Home Assistant at this point, just remember that this machine might not have your Zigbee or Z-Wave coordinators, the sticks, the USB sticks, are plugged into this machine. They might be still on the other machine. As such, all integrations associated with Zigbee and Z-Wave that rely on those coordinators will not work at this point. So you'll need to bring those across if you are intending to use this as your production machine going forward. So that's Home Assistant running on a virtual machine on a Windows host for free. This gives you the best of both worlds, as it's simple to implement, scalable for your needs, very cost effective, as you can implement this for less money than it would cost for a Raspberry Pi and still have much more performance. If you'd like me to go through the full instructions for the backup and subsequent restore or any other topic that you'd like to go through in detail from today, then please let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video and that this helped you explore what I believe is the best hardware solution for the vast majority of users. And if you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see similar content, then please consider subscribing and joining our growing community. See you on the next one.